Hi there, I'm John Brown, a grad student in the Astronomy Department at Ohio State. In this coffee brief, I'll talk about some results from my recent paper on the nearby TDE Assassin 14 Li. When a star is orbiting the center of a galaxy and it passes close enough to the central supermassive black hole, the tidal forces from the gravitational field can be so strong that they actually rip the star apart. This is what's referred to as a tidal disruption event, or a TDE for short. Assassin 14 Li is one of the most nearby TDEs ever discovered. As its name suggests, it was discovered in late 2014 by the All Sky Automated Survey for Supernova, or Assassin, and was the subject of several papers, including a previous Assassin paper that monitored the evolution for about six months. In this paper, we study the evolution of the event for an additional year and a half and studied the evolution of the physical conditions in unprecedented detail. Assassin 14 Li was discovered in V-band when the galaxy PGC 043234 appeared about 50% brighter than it normally does. Follow-up spectra showed the transient event to be a likely TDE, which we announced to the public and began a follow-up campaign spanning several ground and space-based observatories. Shown here are the spectra taken with MODS on the LBT over the course of our 600-day follow-up campaign. The earliest spectrum shows strong, broad hydrogen and helium-2 emission lines superimposed on a blue continuum. Over time, the continuum and line features gradually fade, but even after 500 days there is still excess H-alpha emission relative to the archival host spectrum. We also obtained relatively high-cadence UV and optical photometry with the Swift Space Telescope. In the optical, shown here as the Swift U, B, and V filters, the transient showed a modest increase in brightness relative to the host galaxy and faded gradually for about 200 days, after which very little excess emission remained. In the UV, however, the transient showed a similar initial decline, but remained much brighter than the host for several hundred days. Additionally, Assassin 14 Li was very bright in the X-rays, shown here as the top set of points, and still remains at least a factor of 10 brighter than the pre-TDE levels. These lingering emission features make Assassin 14 Li particularly interesting, since most TDEs observed to date do not show similar behavior. In order to determine the physical characteristics of the event, we model the excess emission and compute the bolometric luminosity as a function of time, shown here by the gray points. This black line shows the exponentially declining curve used in our previous paper to describe the early time evolution, which clearly underpredicts the late time flux. A power law model, shown by this dashed curve, does a better job, though the late time evolution is somewhat flatter than the canonical t to the minus 5 thirds prediction. We also model the x-ray observations and find that the x-ray luminosity tracks the UV optical luminosity reasonably well. We're able to measure the h-alpha luminosity from the mod spectra, and like the UV and optical and x-ray data, an exponential decline underpredicts the late time h-alpha luminosity as well. A power law model is able to describe the H-alpha evolution, though given our relatively loose constraints on the pre-discovery emission, a wide variety of power law models can provide adequate fits to the data. We also study the characteristic radii of the various emitting components. This dotted curve shows the approximate evolution of a parabolic orbit with pericenter equal to the tidal radius of a one solar mass star orbiting a 10 to the 6th solar mass black hole. Assuming the width of the H-alpha feature is reflective of the orbital velocity at some radius, we can infer a characteristic radius for the H-alpha emitting material, shown here by the red squares, that roughly track the evolution of a parabolic orbit. For the X-ray and near-UV data, our black body models imply a surface area, which we use to derive a characteristic radius after making some assumptions about the geometry of the emitting material. We find that the X-ray emission arises from scales that are a few gravitational radii, whereas the UV optical photosphere has a characteristic radius of about 10 AU, which corresponds to about 1,000 gravitational radii, given our assumptions about the black hole mass. The primary finding of our paper is that Assassin 14 Li has remained bright for nearly two years following discovery. One of the consequences of this is that the host galaxy now appears much bluer than it did before the event. We address how the late time colors of the host galaxy can be used to potentially identify other TDEs that were never discovered. For more details about the evolution of this incredible event, be sure to take a look at the paper linked in the description. Thanks for watching.